Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the video. Yes, the GTX 1060 has been formally announced. And it's a bit different to what we had anticipated with some of the rumours. And we're going to go through those. So first things first, how much is the card? 249 US dollars. And that is the GP106, which features 1280 cores, 1 1.7 gigahertz core clock, and memory running at 8 gigahertz, with the July... 19th being the launch but if you want the founders edition of the card you can expect to be paying a premium that can go up to 300 us dollars which is still not bad but definitely going up there and i have a feeling that most folks are going to go with an msi or whatever aib so what is there to discuss well the tdp is 120 watts which is excellent but the real interesting thing here is that nvidia are telling us that the clock of these chips can reach 2 gigahertz, which is absolutely phenomenal, and does also make an awful lot of sense compared to, let's say, what you're getting out of the GTX uh, 1080 and the 1070. By the way, we will be reviewing the 1070 and most likely the 1060 over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're in line for the 1070 review so once the RX 480 review is finished, we're going to be putting out the 1070, then we're going to do the 1060, and I'm probably going to have to palm the keyboard or the headset review off to Amy, simply because I'm going to be really busy with graphics card and other tech stuff. But anyway, I digress. So, 249 US dollars for July 19th worldwide, and that's cheaper than what we'd anticipated because that is for the six gigabyte model now the reason i bring that up is because you might recall that there were some early reports early rumors and in fact just a couple of days ago i said the same thing so hey i'm guilty of this as well that the three gigabyte model was going to be 249 and the free and i'm sorry and the six gigabyte model was going to cost basically 300 dollars this is not the case which is a bit of a head scratcher and makes us wonder what the three gigabyte model is going to be are we going to be seeing a different variant of the gp106 for example will it have fewer cuda cores enabled will it have lower clock speeds or what unfortunately i'm still trying to find that information out pricing obviously will be very different um probably mid a hundred to 200 dollars so let's say 150 to 200 ish us dollars for the free gigabyte variant now <clears throat> my personal standpoint slightly off topic is that the free gigabyte variant for serious gamers is probably not what you're going to be wanting to shoot for the gtx 1060 and the rx 480 are both excellent value for money and i don't care whether you're on team green team red or team i don't give a fuck i just want the best performance possible which personally is the team i align myself with now if you were to compare the gtx 1060 versus the 960 the 960 gets well <laughs> to say ruffle stomped is an understatement it gets absolutely devastated with the 960 being in many cases over twice as slow in key titles such as rise of the tomb raider and witcher 3 which means that for folks who have a gtx 960 and do the traditional upgrade to the mid cycle let's say once again the 960 to the um gtx 1060 or if you went from a 760 to a 960 you're getting fantastic value for money Many AIBs are actually promoting the GTX 1060 as having similar performance to the 980, which is phenomenal. I mean, that essentially means you're getting last generation's performance, expensive performance, but at an absolute steal. And presumably, if we can start seeing AIB models clock to once again the 2 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz range, we'll have to wait on that. It's going to be curious, and this is somewhat off topic, if we're going to see eight pin variants of the card um the reason i bring that up is because obviously some of the some of the um of the uh aibs who are putting out custom variants of the rx 480 are putting eight pin versions out so they can draw more power so that you can clock higher and there are reports already of um, folks who are putting custom cooler versions of the cards up to 14 to 1500 megahertz this is particularly true if you're going water cooling at those type of speeds by the way the card is beating the nano in most 
applications without too much difficulty. In fact, to be precise, the RX 480 is already ruffle stomping the Nano in a lot of uh, benchmarks which require a lot of tessellation because the Polaris architecture has gone that extra mile to improve tessellation and other uh, assets across the board. One key technology that a lot of folks may be interested in if they put together, let's say, um, certain types of videos, maybe fan projects, is NVIDIA's Ansel technology, which has a few games already um, supporting it, including Mirror's Edge Catalyst and Witcher 3, but other titles are going to start popping out, like uh, The Witness, you've got The Division, um, and Paragon, and a couple of others. They will be either in development or they're working on it. And supposedly, also, we're going to see No Man's Sky. Now, for those of you who are not sure what that is, it allows you to basically have the ability to pause the game at whatever point and take a screenshot, but on steroids. So you're going to be able to control the camera in a 360-degree photosphere and then allow you to take the screenshot at absolutely ludicrous resolutions. And it's going to be really cool for... Um, artists, for example, Photoshop artists, if you want to just make, or even if you just want to make a really high resolution background for your PC, or if you want to do something more with that, that's totally up to you. I have a feeling that for most it's going to be a novelty, and honestly, you know, I wouldn't say that it's worthy of a purchase for the Ansel technology alone, but for folks who do care about stuff like that, the GTX uh, 1060 def definitely does have a nice optional extra. I'm sure over the next couple of weeks, we're going to start seeing the usual flurry of benchmarks popping out. And as I said, some leaks have already appeared, and NVIDIA themselves have said that the card's going to be quite overclockable. And we've already started to see it go up to 2 GHz+, plus, which is not shabby, it's over 10%. And you can start imagining what that's going to start doing when serious overclockers or serious AIBs get hold of it and start doing their, their usual tweaks and their super elite versions of the card, which are going to be something named something along the lines of GTX 1060 Ultra Edition, formulated for gaming XYZ, oh my god, what the fuck, barbecue version. And then you start thinking to yourself, well, what the hell difference is that between the what the fuck barbecue edition to the what the fuck, oh my god, it rocks edition. Some of the companies, oh my god, some of the naming conventions start getting really confusing and there'll be like a difference of like 20 megahertz or whatever. But anyway, that's just part and parcel of the GPU industry. But obviously you're going to get the usual partners, which are going to be Asus, Colorful, EVGA, MSI, Palette, and all of the other AIBs which work with NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA are telling us there's a 15% difference between the RX 480 and the GTX 1060. There are a couple of caveats here, however, um, that I think we should bring into play. The first is it depends on the benchmark. I have a feeling in some benchmarks this 1060 is going to do better. In other benchmarks, the AMD cards are going to do better, especially with asynchronous compute. The RectX 12, the Polaris architecture is probably going to have an advantage. NVIDIA are obviously releasing drivers which is going to improve the performance as well as AMD. Now the curious thing is AMD are releasing a driver and I'd love to tell you what it does but it's not formally out yet. They did a statement which I covered yesterday and they're telling us there's a 3% improvement in performance but the power draw for the card has been resolved for the RX 480. Now why this gets really complex is because as I said to you the card is going to be formally available on July 19th, that's the 1060, but the RX 480 custom coolers are already trickling out into retail, but we're going to start seeing them be very readily available, let's say by, well, coincidentally, July 19th. And the reason that's quite funny is because the custom cooler variants, a lot of folks may be interested if they're once again considering overclocking going for the custom cooler variant of the rx480 my initial testing of the rx480 i'll i'll be, I'll be honest i've actually got it in uh my rig yesterday i was playing doom with it but with an older driver variant so i haven't captured the performance yet because there's absolutely no point in me doing that and then a a driver updates released, you know, in the next 24 or so hours and then it's like hey you know all that benchmarking you just did well guess what but anywho, the performance is really stellar. I can't really complain. I haven't touched the overclocking yet, but the 
um, often it's getting 60, 70 frames a second, which is pretty indistinguishable for the 390 that I had in previously. Obviously, I can't tell you what it's like for that like, comparison because my eyes were not glued to the frame rate counter, and also I was going to different areas, and obviously different areas with, well, different loads, different enemies. It's going to definitely change the frame rate a little bit. But still, I was pretty damn happy, impressed with the performance. I've also tested Tomb Raider, getting a very stellar performance around 90 frames a second at 1080p with um, the original Tomb Raider, everything at maxed, including tress effects and all of that jazz. So it's pretty damn impressive. My point being, though, um, if you're on the fence and not sure which card to get, it's going to be very curious because with the custom cooler variants of the RX 480, the AIB's also putting out their custom spins on the GTX 1060. It's probably going to be a pricing war versus what you're willing to buy. The real elephant in the room, and from what I can tell, looking at all of the release pictures and all of the statements, is that there is no SLI finger on the GTX 1060. Now, the reason that I bring that up isn't because... I am someone who absolutely loves SLI and cannot do without it, and it's my, my best friend and buddy. But, because if you are unsure how much graphical performance you want in six months or three months from now, and you're considering the potential to go with two GPUs, it's a very good possibility that the RX 480 may serve a lot of folks' needs better. Because obviously you've got that ability to just say, eh, you know what? No, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna go with the um, 480 and be able to put in another one. But really, I actually like this. I think it's one of those times where both companies are targeting a niche, but I don't necessarily know if there's going to be a clear winner. So we'll have to wait um, and see. But as I said, we're going to be reviewing everything anywho. So hopefully you'll stick around with us. But with all of that said, there might be some extra stuff that pops out in the next couple of days. But I think for now I'm done. So hopefully you'll see me soon. Anyway, uh, there was something else I wanted to discuss, but I honestly can't remember what it is. So I'll probably remember it five minutes after this video goes up and I'll probably cry. But I'll see you soon, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.